The new Nissan Z is one of the more exciting cars to come out in recent times and AMS have been leading the way with development on this platform recently just before this SEMA show running a 992 at 137 mile an hour. We're here with Nick from AMS to talk a little bit more about this platform and the development. So first of all congratulations on that time Nick, uh, first, first in the world to get into the nines and I'm imagining there'll be a few on your tail pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, I think there's going to be a number of people trying to catch up to us, but it feels good to be the first ones. Definitely. Now, when it comes to choosing a platform that a company like AMS think is going to be the next big thing, something worthy of pouring what I can only imagine is a lot of time and money into R&D, developing these parts that you can then on sell, what's the sort of process? Do you throw a dart at a board or do you, do you have a really good idea uh, what is going to be a next successful model? Uh, sure, yeah, we, we spent a lot of time considering all the new platforms that we take on, uh, but this one just made sense straight out the, out the gate. Uh, we were really well uh, versed in the Infiniti Q50 and Q60 platform, which has the VR30 engine that's found in the new Z. So it just, it just made sense. And the Z is also a pure driver's car, so we figure that it's going to be a popular car to modify. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, we're seeing less and less turbocharged rear wheel drive uh, sports cars, so to speak. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, it makes sense that this would be something that is going to see pretty good uptake. Now, you mentioned the Q50, Q60, the engine platform there, the, the three litre V6 twin turbo, is it identical or have there been up, updates for the new Z? There have been some small updates, but they're they're nearly identical. The turbos have a little bit of a just uh, a change in them, um, but uh, we're finding that as we try to port all of our products over from the Q50 Q60 platform, that there are a lot of little adjustments that need to be made, or just parts you know ground up. Naturally. The other element that makes this car maybe not as new as on face value it seems is the chassis from what I can understand is actually really similar to the existing 370 or the older 370Z, is that correct? That is correct, it's very very similar um, as far as like brakes, uh, suspension arms, links, um, uh, bushings, coilovers, all of it pretty much ports right over if not uh, with little change. So is it safe to assume we're going to see a lot of very fast support from the aftermarket bringing these products across from a Z, a 370Z into the new Z? I would believe that to be the case, yeah. Now this is a little unfair in terms of a question because obviously you do have that experience on the Q50 and Q60 which we've already alluded to there. So you're not really starting completely from scratch on this new Z but with the car what were your sort of first uh, sort of design requirements and, and where did you have to go to first to figure out what was needed to make this car perform you know, now in the nine second bracket? Sure, so uh, even before the, came out, we, the car came out we heard of rumors of heat soak issues so we went straight away with cooling products. Uh, that's kind of our, our bread and butter is uh, turbocharged uh, cooling efficiency and performance. Uh, so we went straight away with that. We also work with um, some fueling partners uh, which is also you know, going to be needed to make big power. Um, so we have uh, new injectors that just came out for DI that uh, are, are providing the fuel that we need as well as you know big um, uh, fuel pump. Uh, but uh, AccuTech, uh, we're working with them to develop the software to, to be able to tune the car uh, even before getting it. So that's been a huge thing for us. Um, you know, now that all all of our work has been uh, complete with AccuTech and the software is out, not anybody tuning these is going to be able to benefit from it. Uh, some other things that uh, were little challenges is the turbos are slightly different, so trying to get a drop-in set of turbos uh, quickly uh, required some uh, creative modifications, let's say. <laughs> it, it looks on face value like the packaging side of things, particularly in the engine bay, is incredibly tight. So mm -hmm. is this going to make it difficult for people to go with uh, uh, just an off-the-shelf aftermarket turbo as opposed to a direct fit option with a larger core? Well, right now, people, uh, it's really common on the Infinity platform, and I think it's going to be on the Z as well, uh, is taking an OEM turbo and kind of like uh, milling it out, if you will, and putting in bigger cartridges. Uh, there will be standalones coming uh, from a bunch of people, um, but, uh, but yeah, it's definitely tight in there, so it's going to be... Uh, it's going to require some work. <laughs> uh, in terms of fueling, which you mentioned there, these later model direct injected engines, traditionally we haven't had the benefit of a range of suppliers in the aftermarket bringing out larger direct injectors. So 
how, why has this been the case with, with this particular platform? Does, is this again a sort of a follow over from the Q50, Q60 or is this just uh, because of this engine being popular there are companies that climbed on board with that? Uh, for for this particular platform, uh, you know, the fueling is actually all identical to the Infinity Q50, Q60. So, uh, thankfully, all the work that we've done building that platform and that community and and really pushing the envelope uh, has basically set us up really nicely for the new Z. All right, let's talk power figures uh, in stock form. What could you expect one of those to put down on a dyno? In completely stock format. I'm not 100% sure of the numbers, honestly. <laughs> I can't give you that one. <laughs> Off the top of my head, at least. All right, let, let's talk about with modifications. I mean, obviously, this is a, a, a moving target, but mm -hmm. where are AMS currently sitting at to run that 992? Uh, it's making 719 rear wheel horsepower right now. And, and still on a stock block, correct? Stock motor, stock trans. All right, so at what point do you sort of see those aspects, those areas needing more work? Do you already know what the upper limit of that particular engine is? Uh, typically on the Infinity Q50, Q60 platform, we would not push it that far uh, for end users. <laughs> um, but we really wanted to be the first ones in the nines. Um, it was a big uh, accomplishment from the R&D team. We put a, I mean, they thrashed really hard, R&D and the tuning team at AMS, uh, to just be the tip of the spear. We're really excited about this platform. In terms of getting the car to go down the drag strip that quickly, you know, managing the, the power delivery is obviously really important. Mm -hmm. uh, are you able to do anything within the EQTEC platform in terms of speed or a gear dependent boost to help uh, just get that power to the ground rather than it turning into smoke? Uh, yes, we, we do set uh, different boost targets per gear. Uh, so yeah, we're not getting the full torque in the lower uh, the lower gears, but um, we also put uh, some drag uh, wheels, slicks and skinnies on it and just took it out and gave it all. So, In terms of further development, what you've got left, I mean, how far do you intend to push this engine? Are we going to see complete uh, sort of reciprocating, rotating assemblies for the engine uh, to support more power or 700 plus horsepower? Are you kind of figuring that's uh, about where you need to be on this platform, no, no need to develop further products? I think everybody is interested, not everybody, but there will always be people that want to push the envelope and make more power. Um, we are currently working on our VR30 engine program and it should be coming out sooner than later. Uh, but we would definitely recommend that probably around the 600 horsepower level, something like that. Okay, but for those who really want to push further, you're going to have something in the works for them. Absolutely. If people do want to find out more about the products, Nick, where are they best to do so? Uh, AMSperformance.com, our website has uh, you know all the info you could possibly need. There's going to be a lot of new products popping up there, but Instagram, Facebook, our YouTube channel, we like to uh, uncover as much as we're doing and show it off, so check us out. Perfect. Thanks for your time there. Thank you. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.